Hi there, I'm Matt McGemory. I'm part of the agronomic team here in the central and west central part of the state of Illinois for Pioneer. And today I'm in a continuous cornfield. And if you look very closely in this continuous cornfield, you'll see some evidence that we've had rootworm beetles feeding upon the leaf tissue. You can see the window painting that we see that's commonly associated with rootworm beetle feeding. And if you look closely around here, you can actually see the little beetles themselves crawling around. And so we have some indicators that in this field at least, we had some kind of presence of western corn rootworm. I bring this all up because we're entering that part of the year, that time of the year, when it's gonna be really important for us to get these things distributed in the countryside. These are yellow sticky carts, and this is the tool that we use to monitor for adult beetles and we monitor for those adult beetles we see if they cross critical thresholds of a few to several beetles per trap per day and that gives us an indication if we have enough beetles that result in enough eggs that are going to result in enough larva going into that next growing season i bring all this up for one other reason though too we have every reason to think because of the rainfall that we saw that we'll see some kind of substantial reduction and rootworm numbers going into 2020. Why do we say that? Think back to 2015. That was an incredibly wet year for us throughout the Midwest, but in particular, the central and west part of Illinois on into the state of Missouri. I remember serving in Missouri at that time, and we literally had the far western part of that state with three feet, three feet of rainfall at that period. We had enough saturated conditions that year that intersected with rootworm hatch at just the right time that we really knocked down that rootworm population, as you can see in this graph right here, that highlights saturation as it relates to probable hatch for rootworm. Now, why did it result in that number, that reduction in number of those larvae? Well, one reason was that we had low oxygen environments, right? So we literally had some kind of drowning event. But the other thing is we filled those poor spaces with water. The larvae, as they were hatching, were not therefore able to find the root material that they needed to, and they starved to death. Well, fast forward to 2019, and we see a situation, as you can see on these graphs, that I'm gonna kind of flash over right here. We have a situation that looks very, very similar to what we ran into in 2015. Very saturated conditions that happened to occur right at that period of time when rootworm larvae were hatching from those eggs. And not only that, but if you begin to look at the amount of crop that was actually planted, you also discover that in the middle of that period, even if they caught a break, we ran into a period there where we had basically very little root material in the countryside for them to survive upon. So there are all sorts of indicators that we may look at some kind of substantial reduction in rootworm numbers going into 2020. But guess what? That is great sound theory. That's what science does. Even in agricultural science, we try to make well-educated guesses. And that's our best well-educated guess as to what's going to happen right now going into 2020. The only way we can really find out, though, if we're going to have a problem or not, is not to strictly rely upon theory, but it's to test that theory. And that's what we're gonna be doing with these things right here. So despite the fact that we've run into some very saturated conditions that probably knocked down those numbers, probably resulted in some kind of hit to the rootworm population, we still have to get those cards out into the countryside. We have to put them up on rotated ground in particular. We wanna be able to give ourselves some direction on rotated ground. Do I have to invest in a rootworm trade? Or am I finding the kind of low beetle counts that make it possible that I can just invest in a corn board tray and not both of those? So we need those traps out in the countryside to test out our theory, yes, but also to give us some good direction about what we need to do investment-wise going into 2020. Well, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll talk with you soon. That concludes this Pioneer Growing Point Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.